And I'm now extremely excited to introduce the next part of this session. I'll now hand over to Marcel and Philippe, who are going to talk about their journey with Katana and how it's used at Micros. Okay, thanks, Ariel. Um, so I'd say just to get a better understanding of how uh, we use Katana and like the projects that we're working on, let's have a look at our showreel. Maybe if you can play that. Just sit back and watch people light. Ladies and gentlefish, welcome to the Octa Room, y'all. Juliet, wait, stop! I, I, I can explain. What on earth were you thinking? I was getting this. Remember this? You risked getting smashed for some flour? Not some flour, our flour. I, I, I did this for you. Uh, so, it was in 2012, actually, that Micros Animation started working on the first animated uh, feature film, which was Asterix and the Mansion of the Gods. Uh, and we worked straight away in Katana, that was version 1.4 at the time. And on the right side here, you can see our first you know, proud splash screen for the production. Um, since then, we have completed eight feature animation films with Katana. Uh, they all have like very different uh, production challenges and uh, visual style and, you know, in terms of budget as well. Uh, and now we have five more feature films currently in production. Um, so when we started working on Asterix, uh, honestly, there was not so much of Katana around yet, and that we definitely didn't have any experience inside the company. Uh, we just started, you know, to create a feature film pipeline. So uh, let's have a look why we chose to have Katana at the heart of that pipeline. Um, the first thing uh, was scale. So the project itself asked for a scale that we hadn't tackled yet in the company. And um, as Ariel was mentioning already, that recipe-based scene building uh, really allowed us to upscale in scene content. It was the deferred loading that helped a lot with uh, memory management and the big scenes. And at the same time, uh, Katana has this built-in uh, um, proxy system that allows the lighting artist to always have a very good orientation of where they place the lights during the lighting process. A uh, second thing also mentioned by Ariel uh, was the use of templates and library scenes. So this, this idea of preparing things in one place and then using it somewhere else uh, in, in many places, basically, uh, that's at the core of it. And those things are either shared, uh, for us at least, with the uh, node graph templates, so uh, prepared uh, node graphs, or directly as look files attributes that uh, are imported via look files. And that allows to hide away a lot of the technical complexity that comes with uh, uh, in the daily work from a very specific set of artists that 
basically should never have any knowledge or any look at these things and just concentrate on their artistic uh, workflows and uh, their artistic work. Um, that kind of approach also makes change broadcasting a lot easier because it's just a central place where you, where you change things and then from there you send it to many different places afterwards. Um, then, of course, we were also seduced by the um, sequence-based lighting workflows. So since Katana is node-based, uh, this idea of the data flowing down the graph and inheriting on the different levels uh, played a key role. Um, that, that picks up that recipe approach before as well. So the scenes are really light and that means that we can have a lot, a lot, several, um, well, it is a lot actually of shot scenes inside a single katana file and the lighting artist can work on all of them simultaneously um, and have the light rigs inherit from one shot to another from key shot to baby shots or from different levels. And then uh, there is katana's extensibility through uh, anything that is a custom tool. Um, Already from the beginning, we had a very good support from the foundry. We even had developers, you know, coming into the studio and showing us uh, how to write our plugins, basically. And there, um, you can see this example we had used sometimes. We created um, tools that create many, many nodes, but still Katana just two three of them because of that recipe approach. Um, and then. Uh, another important part is that there is a continuous and automated update, update strategy for those tools. Um, that was particularly important to us because, as we were saying in the beginning, we, we were still ironing out our pipeline like during the production of Asterix and the Mansion of the Gods. So it was very important to have these tools, uh, to keep having these tools evolving uh, all the time. Um, and then another key point is automation. So Katana really shines in managing things in bulk. Um, and like this, we can uh, minimize human intervention. Basically, we can automize all the steps that a human, that can be automized, that a human should, should never touch. Um, so now let's have a look at some of the tools that we were able to build in the past years. Um, here, this is an early example of a very simple uh, crowd system, actually. So uh, the system is particle-based, and actually all we did is taking uh, the code, uh, the source code of the Alembic in node that is uh, shipped with Katana, and we were extending it uh, to support animation cycles. And then all we had to do is create, you know, 10,000 Alembic nodes. Uh, inside Katana in order to fill this uh, Colosseum in Rome uh, with the spectators. Uh, this is an example of a system that we built to transfer simple rigs between Maya and Katana. Uh, so you see they come with their controllers and uh, the idea is to facilitate the set dressing process and even you know, do part or enable us to do part of the set dressing very late uh, in Katana itself directly before lighting. We also had uh, plugins for the viewer. So this is an example of a display of uh, open VDB volumes. Uh, we also, you know, had uh, custom uh, manipulators for our shaders and uh, lights and light rigs. Um, up to now, we also maintain uh, a custom cut of the Arnold renderer plugin K2A. That doesn't play. It should, yep. Um, so this allowed us to integrate custom behavior for light linking, uh, to have geometry baking from, from inside Katana, uh, to do custom instance source um, uh, treatment, and to have uh, motion blurred user attributes that could be exported. The pipeline is also based on an in-house scene descriptor format, so we have uh, that operator that brings in our custom scene description um, along um, with Alembic. So we made lots of changes finally to the Alembic node, um, like support of uh, non-standard nodes, like render procedurals, uh, those animation cycles that we're uh, talking about, and all the setup of the custom operators that we have and use in our pipeline. 
Uh, on the other side, of course, there's a, a big bunch of uh, rather artist-faced uh, tools, I would say. So everything from layer creation, point cloud manipulation, uh, we have um, we have customized the light gr life groups uh, to work with. And in the end, we, we really think that it's Katana's extensibility that played like a very major role uh, to enable us to deliver all these different projects that have like you know not only very different visual styles but really different production challenges with the uh, budgets etc that they come with uh, okay so now I'll hand over to Philippe who will explain a bit more of how we actually use Katana in the pipeline thank you Marcel uh, sorry does not work yeah you hear me yeah. Uh, thank you, Marcel. Thank you, everyone, to be here uh, today. So I'm going to talk to you a bit more about the way we are using our workflow uh, based on the libraries and templates, mainly. So uh, here is a basic schematic on, of uh, all the, the templates and the libraries and the working scenes uh, uh, interplay together. So on the right, you can see uh, libraries. Uh, for instance, the shed shading uh, library. Um, we have also some render global library and the uh, uh, lighting library. So, for, for, for to start with the shading library, this is where we uh, define the recipes for the shading for a whole show. Um, uh, the render globals are more a set of different kind of scenes where we define the, for instance, resolution, the type of motion blur. Uh, over scans, uh, the AOVs, uh, pair departments, uh, also. Um, after we, we work also with templates. So, uh, templates can be katana scenes, but it can be also uh, fully uh, built by script uh, using Python. Um, and at the end, we, uh, we, we ended up with working scenes. So, um, uh, yeah, we use also the asset uh, an asset man management system to to uh, inject information to to build to help build uh, these kind of scenes, uh, working scenes. Um, about uh, the template, uh, to come back to that, uh, here we have uh, the surfacing template. It can be different for characters or for your environment, for instance. Uh, on the lower part, we have the, a shot template. This is the starting point to build a, a working scene for lighting, for instance, or also for quality check rendering. So yeah, that's it for that slide. Um, this is another kind of library uh, as an example. This one is a lighting library. So. Um, you can see a different type of lights here, def defined as uh, uh, with uh, Arnold uh, nodes. Uh, on top of that, we have a bunch of different kind of filters, um, and also a bank of uh, gobo textures. So, um, what is interesting here to see that every uh, filters can are shared uh, between uh, each type of uh, of lights. So it makes a coherent presentation for the artist to, to find the, the, the parameters. Uh, they are always at the same place for, for them. Uh, here we have a close-up on the, on the type of lights. Um, this is obviously something where Katana shines a lot uh, to remove uh, complexity for the, from the, the artist. So for that, we, we spend a lot of time on the, on the UIs and uh, expose only the useful parameters for them uh, and trying to reduce as much as possible the, the, the amount of uh, parameters. So it's easier for them to read and to, to uh, do their job at, at the end. Uh, also another good point for, uh, about that is that uh, it makes them, um, it makes them it makes them, their training uh, really quicker, so they are really um, uh, quicker to, to, to work well uh, in, the, in Katana. Um, and finally, at the end, this kind of library is exported as look file. 
uh, and they are used directly in the uh, lighting scenes. Uh, here is an example of a shading lib for a show. Um, so again, a, a shading library is where we define uh, recipes uh, for the shaders. So we always start with a, with a Uber shader. Afterwards, we, we uh, define presets for characters or, or, or the environment. And at the end, uh, all that materials are exported in a look file uh, that is referenced live in a working scene afterwards. So it's really a good uh, strategy to, to, for batch updates. Uh, because uh, during a show, we, the recipe can change a lot and evolve. We add features, we, we uh, change the look sometimes uh, if the client uh, makes the decision to do that. To do that. So it's really easy for us to, uh, to update and change the features uh, during the production. And uh, it's only at, on one place. So it's really easy to handle and uh, to manage the shading. Uh, here we have a bird's eye view on the network material, an Arnold network material. So you can see that it can be pretty complex, even if you don't see uh, every node, because we are uh, using a lot of uh, groups. Uh, this one is probably uh, the most complex we ever did. It's for a current show we, we are working on. Um, to, to talk about the templates, uh, here are a few uh, shot templates. They are really different, as you can see. Uh, it's, it's for, they are for three different shows, and uh, they have nonetheless some common points, uh, like the uh, dedicated, uh, dedicated artist space, like the, on that part. Um, this template system is really uh, useful for us to tailor uh, uh, the, 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 the way we work on each show because uh, we have different supervisors for the, the lighting and they don't want uh, to, to work in the same way, usually. So um, these templates are used in, in, the, in the same same pipeline, nonetheless. So we don't have to, to change everything for each show. It's just templates. Let's talk about uh, some specific of the surfacing department. Um, this template is for the character surfacing for a show. Um, <clears throat> so at, on, at the top, you have the inputs, like the, the camera, that are usually published by the, by the modeling team. So we can share the, the, the same camera from the modeling to the surfacing for the turntables. Uh, here are the inputs for the uh, geometry, uh, like uh, Alambic and uh, Yeti, if we, if we need. Um, so, uh, at, at the end, um, no, sorry, I'm a bit... Uh, <laughs> um, yes, for, so to continue. Um, so, the shading library is, is coming here, and afterwards, here is the part where the, the artist is working, really. So, he's adding nodes. Uh, on the uh, making overrides to the materials, defining the textures, etc. And uh, on the lower part, we have the render section. So here you can see that we have already presented uh, a different kind of moods uh, to check the surfacing in a different type of uh, mood uh, that will be in the in the current show. So at at the end, we we. We use that template and it produce uh, this uh, this uh, working scene for this character uh, called Chains, for instance. Uh, <coughs> so once uh, the, the 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 working scene is built and the the, the artist has done his his work, we are under turntables. So um. Uh, we can you can see that we can render a lot from the same scene, so the, 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 this, the, the same scene. Uh, also, we can work on several shading variants in the same scene. Uh, yeah, we have, we have uh, four. And it makes uh, the, the work of overriding the materials really, really easier and quicker. Um, 
environment sound surfacing could be a bit tricky because uh, it, uh, it, uh, you, you have to use a lot of different uh, sub assets. So because they are usually done by different artists, they, they can be they, 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 can, they uh, can be have some kind of different style and we need to polish everything so the set is uh, looking good. So there is two strategies for that. So uh, this one, the first one, or we can also make the wall surfacing on, a, on a, an environment in the same place. Usually we prefer the first one because it's, uh, it's quicker. Uh, and Katana is really great for that. Uh, let's, let's see some specific of the lighting department now. Uh, as Marcel mentioned uh, at the beginning, one key point of, uh, of uh, the use of Katana is the sequence-based uh, lighting. So this schematic uh, describes a bit the, 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 the light inheritance uh, uh, during Asterix. Uh, so we were working at sequence level first, then on key shots, then on what we call baby shots. Uh, Asterix was kind of linear in a way because uh, uh, all shots were, were delivered from animation uh, as blocks. So the lighters can already uh, light a lot of shots together uh, at that moment. But the reality is now that the, the animation, uh, the, the, the delivering of animations uh, are a lot more fractured. So what we introduce is another level of inheritance. We work firstly on the environment and afterwards we work on the sequence and again the key shots and the BB shot. Um, as for many aspects of, of Katana, we always will work from the wider to the more particular. Uh, senior lighters do, the, do the, the lighting of environment for the general mood. They publish a live group and this is used in the generated lighting scenes. Here is an example of a production uh, inheritance. So this is the, the establishing. You have the two key shots, one on the left, one on the, on the right. And uh, afterwards, of course, uh, all the baby shots. Um, lighting quota were, were adjusted on that show, uh, it, uh, meaning that we have only one day per shot for the baby shots. And uh, the key shots were more two and a half uh, longer to light. Uh, so this shows you the, the, the really, uh, like, uh, sorry. <coughs> that the workflow improves really the efficiency uh, for uh, uh, to get really good quota. So um, sequence based lighting. This is a working scene. Uh, you, you can clearly identify uh, key shots and baby shots, and even uh, on the top the environment lighting. Each uh, modification at a higher level. Uh, is inherited at the lower part. So coming first from the environment, then the key shot and the BB shot. And at last, uh, I'd like to talk a bit about the connection we have between lighting and compositing. So uh, at Micros, we developed a custom tool just to create layers on demand. So as for other uh, type of uh, functionality, we use a uh, template for that too. So we, we do presets for the characters, for the environment, for the volumetrics, for the effects, for, in, for instance. Um, and the co pre-compositing is uh, automatically done uh, as a post-process, on demand if we want as a, at the render time uh, when the artist sends uh, his render on the farm. Um, Another example of this connection uh, is the, the way that we, are, we set the focus plane in Katana. Um, the defocus is then applied in Nuke afterwards. So it helps a lot the artist and the supervisor to, 
to focus on the the the, the, the part that needs the most uh, more, more work than others. So I let the final word to Marcel, and uh, thank you. Yeah. So now that we have a bit of an overview of how Katana is actually used. Um, would like to just insist on one uh, essential point, which is um, that this system of Katana and how, how we build, of, uh, like using it, allows us to scale uh, and scale quite big, actually. Um, but at the same time, and that's very important to us, is that we can still adapt uh, to the individual needs of the projects, which means, you know, not only the visual style, as we said, but also the production realities, uh, the budget, the challenges that come up uh, with the different um, uh, studios to work with, the production period, of course, and the amount of people that are actually working on the productions, which can vary quite a, um, uh, uh, quite a bit in, in the projects we are doing. Um, so now we're having here these first five uh, feature animation films in production. Uh, there's an average shot count of like 1,600. Uh, I think, and then there is one uh, long form episodic as well that is close to something like 9,000 shots. And all these are running in parallel, which means, you know, that's uh, like 17,000 shots to be tackled. And um, that also means that we'll have uh, roughly 120 surfacing artists and 150 lighting artists working in Katana throughout this production. So that's quite big numbers, but we still think, and you know, uh, we have proved that before that with the with the preparation for each production that we're doing, uh, we can actually limit um, training and onboarding to a very minimum, even you know, for people that haven't touched katana before, because of all this uh, hiding of complexity and having these templates and library scenes that are pre uh, made by senior people mostly. Um, so yeah, we are hiring on all of these projects and actually not only artists, so we're also looking for TDs and developers uh, all the time. So um, if you're interested, uh, please come and meet Camilla and Mark uh, at our booth E15 here at FMX or, or also find the job opportunities at uh, the website microsanimation.com. Thanks for listening. That's it from us.